So, if you remember question five was about a locomotive that was hitting a buffer, okay? So essentially you had a system that looked a bit like this. Okay, so you had a system that looks a bit like that, okay? A mass spring damper system, your classic mass spring damper problem. And we were, we were given M, that was 2,000 kilograms, and we were given C, which was 15 newton seconds per millimetre, okay? That equals 15, uh, millimetre, that equals 15,000, Newtons per meter, if you do the conversion between millimeters and meters, you know that there's a thousand millimeters in one meter, so you multiply the thing by a thousand to get it in newtons per meter. And we know that K in the question was 40 newtons per meter. No, sorry, 40 newtons per millimeter. So again, you do the um, equation, you get 40 newtons per meter. And so the way we approached the problem in the tutorial is we said, okay, well, x of t is a e to the minus zeta, sorry, gamma upon 2t cosine of omega dt plus phi, okay? And we found that uh, minus gamma upon 2, remember, is, I think is minus 3.75 is what you would have found. And omega d, I think is, you found to be 2 points. Where did you find it? 2.4367. Okay. So you can plug that into this equation. You end up with A e to the minus 3.75 T cosine of 2.4367 T plus alpha. And then I told you in the tutorial to find the derivative of that equation to find A and alpha, and we end up coming with alpha equaling pi by two, okay? And A came out to be a minus number, minus 4.104. Yeah, do we all agree? And so your solution in the tutorial would have looked something like this. Minus 4.104 e to the minus 3.75 t cosine of 2.4367 t plus pi by 2. So that's what you found as you wrote. that's perfectly acceptable as a solution, okay? Now, let's apply the equation that we've written on the equation sheet. Are you, are you all caught up with what I've written? No, I, I shall wait. Okay, so the equation that we've just covered in the notes, okay, <coughs> looks a bit like this. E to the minus zeta omega naught t times by x naught cosine of omega d t plus x dot naught plus Zeta omega naught x dot, sorry x naught 
divided by omega d sine of omega d t. So we need to find these various terms. Okay, well omega naught is root k upon n. So that's 40 times 10 to the 3 divided by 2 times 10 to the 3. Which comes out to be 4.4 seven two radians per second. That makes omega D, if we use the new form of the equation that we come up with, one minus zeta oh we need zeta first obviously is uh, C divided by two root M K. So that's fifteen times ten to the three divided by two two times ten to the three 40 times 10 to the 3. Zero point eight three eight five. So you plug that into this equation, 4.472, 1 minus 0 0.8385 squared. That comes out to be 2.467. Okay, so you can see quite clearly that uh, this agrees with what you found um, in the tutorial using the different equation, okay, which is uh, hopeful. <coughs> and the initial conditions that you should have applied in the tutorial was x naught, okay, was zero, and x dot naught was ten meters per second. When time is zero, the train has just hit the buffers, but it's not moved any further, and so the displacement at that point in time is zero. But it hits the buffer at a certain velocity, and that velocity, given in the question, was 10 meters per second. So there's your initial conditions. So now we've got omega naught, omega d and zeta, and we know x naught and x dot naught, we can then just simply plug these values into the equation to get the solution. And so let's do so. So we're taking this equation, x of t equals minus e, minus zeta omega naught, if you multiply them together over here, minus zeta omega naught is minus zeta, which is 0 0.8385, times by 4.472, that comes out to be 3, well, minus 3.75. Okay, so minus 3.75t, up here, open the brackets, x naught is 0. So that term completely disappears. Yeah, do you all agree? x naught is 0, so that term disappears. x dot naught is not 0, it's 10. So we have 10. Well, that term, x naught is 0, so that term also disappears. So we have 10 divided by omega naught, which is, uh, sorry, omega, omega d, which is 2.4367 sine of 2.4367t. Now, if you do the sums, you end up getting. 4.104e to the minus 3.75t sine of 2.4367t. There's your solution. Now, the eagle eyed among you, if you look back at your solution, will realize that that does not match that. Yeah? 
and then match each other. How is that possible? To have two solutions that look quite different. Here we've got a sine, here we've got a cosine, here we've got a plus pi by two, down here we've got no phase at all. And you're thinking, well, hold on, how can this, and then here we've got a minus and here we've got a plus. How could that possibly be the same? Well, let's take this equation. I'm just going to rewrite the equation that we found before. I'm going to use a little trick called mathematics. We know that cosine of minus x equals uh, cosine of x. Okay, that means it's an even function. Flip a, flip a cosine of x around the y-axis, you get the same thing. Okay, so if you take a value of minus x, you get the same thing. Okay, the same value as if you took x. And so what we can do is we can replace this in here. We've got minus 4.144 e to the minus 3.75 t cosine of minus 2.4367 t minus pi by 2. That's the same thing. Now on page 11, we stated quite clearly that sine of theta is equal to cosine of theta minus pi by 2. Okay, They're related to each other, both sinusoids, but they start at different points in sense. Okay, So when sine of theta, you can write cosine of theta minus pi by 2, it's the same thing, same value. Okay, If you think about the shapes of cosine and sine, they're shifted over simply by 90 degrees from one another, and that's the relationship. And so, quite clearly, we can write this now. Minus 4.104 e to the minus 3.75 t sine of minus 2.4367 t. That gets rid of the pi by 2 bit. We're closing up on this solution, okay? But we've still got a minus here and a minus here. So I'm going to use another bit of trigonometry. And this sign we know is an odd function. Okay, so if you rotate the function around the origin, <laughs> well, by 180 degrees, you get basically minus of sine of x. Yeah, if you sine is an odd function, so you rotate it around the origin by 180 degrees. This is the relationship. And so what we can do is we've got a minus here. Okay, well that's equal to minus sine of x. Well, minus times a minus becomes a plus, and a minus times a minus becomes a plus. So you end up with x of t quite clearly. And those two now match each other. So quite clearly, that form that we had, the, you know, the form we've just covered in terms of just plugging in your initial conditions, which is just up here. The form we had just at the, you know, just above, at the top of here, if you look on your notes to the line above omega naught, there's the equation that we had. That quite clearly works, because this has obviously got, we've got a solution down here. Now, our solution that we found in the tutorial, which was this form, we've just shown that those two things are the same. Okay, By doing a bit of trigonometry, 
cosine is an even function, so minus x you can replace with x. Okay, or x you can replace with minus x. Sine and cosine are related by 90 degrees. So sine of theta is sine of the cosine of theta minus pi by 2. We can use that bit of knowledge to get rid of the minus pi by 2 by changing this into a sine. <coughs> and because sine is an odd function, if you've got a minus in here, you can essentially take that out and apply it over here. And so I, that's what I did. I took it out, applied it over here. That becomes a plus. You end up with this form here, which matches perfectly the form that we found when we applied all the initial additions using that new equation. Is that clear? Now, as I have said and will say again, okay, your exam is not a memory test. You're given the equation sheet. It's in the back of the books, okay? And, um, and if I ask you a question, and it's quite clear that you've got the initial conditions and you know what sort of system it is, you're very welcome to apply this equation and solve it, okay? We've just gone through that. That's given to you in the equation sheet. That's perfectly acceptable. Okay, um, You don't have to sit there and do the derivation of the basic equation and then work out what all the terms are and stick them in. Um, if you want to use that equation, you can do. Okay, That doesn't mean you don't have to remember differentiation because we're going to do an awful lot more of it in the rest of this course. But that, like I said, is a differentiation you don't need to worry about worrying how to do. Okay, Because I've given you this equation in the equation sheet. So it's perfectly acceptable for you to follow this, this steps down to this line and then stop. Okay, That's fine. This is the solution. Perfectly valid. Likewise, it's perfectly valid if you wanted to do it this way and came up with this as your solution. Again, that's perfectly valid. They're both correct answers. Okay, As we've just shown. They're different, but they're both correct. <coughs> they will give you the same if you, if you were to plot this, that would give you exactly the same as if I was to plot this. They'd look identical. 